fuck is wrong with a human being that in jail, like jail smells like ass, okay? It smells like ass, straight up smells like And so we had a sink in our cell, and we would stop up the uh, bottom of the sink, and uh, I bought sodas because I had a little bit of money, because I had friends, because I'm nice to people instead of being an asshole to people generally in life. And so those people gave me, sent me money and put it on my store call so I could afford to buy stuff. So I bought sodas and I bought other things and I had a store. Now a store in jail is called a two for one store. The way it works is if I give you something, then when you get your canteen, you have to give me back two. It's a fairly profitable business and it allows you to give you and your friends lots of snacks and shit. And it allows you to save money up if you get money put in your store call because you don't have to spend any more money because these motherfuckers have to pay you all the time. So I basically spent about $45, $50 on my first store and I never spent any more money ever again. My store continues to grow all this. Now here's a trick. On Friday night, I could bring home ice. So I would fill my sink up with ice and I would put uh, cans in there that I bought and I would chill them. And for three for one, I would sell you a fucking uh, soda. So, three hots for one ice cold Coke. Now, if you've ever been in jail, and you've never had, and you've, if you've been, say, a year without a cold Coke, you've only been drinking hot Coca-Cola that you get from the canteen, and you know that hot Coca-Cola's got that foamy shit in your mouth, and I don't drink sodas anymore, but... I have drank plenty. So you know that hot, foamy shit that the lukewarm Coke gives you? Well, you know that crisp, cold bite that a fucking Coke that's like 32 degree gives you? There's a difference, right? So I was selling the snack. So three for one, you know, three hot sodas, give you a cold soda on Friday afternoon. So I could sell you a cold, I could sell you a cold, hot, ice cold Coke. Hell, I give you out a cup, I give you a little bit of ice. Three for one. This was Canada, this was Canada, this was Canada, not U.S. This was Canada. This was Canada, not the U.S. You don't get soda in the U.S. You don't get shit in the U.S. This was Connect. This was in Manitoba, Winnipeg, Manitoba, the Headingley Hilton. And our store was pretty fat. We could get popsicles on Friday night. We could get sodas. We could get food. We could buy cigarettes. Spend a lot of fucking money. But, but you could come to me and you could get shit. You could come to me... A bundle of tobacco was four for one. That's just the way it worked. I had coffee. Coffee, a Sanka was three for one. So if you needed a Sanka, then I had this huge motherfucker that was my bouncer. And he made sure I got my money. But he kept anything, I've told y'all guys this, he kept anything that anybody kept. So I didn't get my shit back. He just fucking scared the shit out of somebody and fucking took the stuff back. So that's how I got my shit back. That's how I stayed in business. If somebody fucked me on a three for one deal, I'd send Tiny after him and he'd fucking kick their ass and he'd fucking he'd keep whatever they had. He weighed like 395 and could stuff a fucking basketball. Tiny. That guy. <coughs> I ran from the US government into Canada across the border on a plane in Montreal in 1997 I crossed the border into Montreal on a plane and came into the country and ate poutine for the first time and uh, went into the store and saw these fucking Arab dudes I swear to God they were planting a fucking bomb I think they blew up fucking something somewhere and made me leave a hookah shop um, traveled across the entire state, of, the entire country of Canada on a bus. I don't think it was a Greyhound. I think it was something in Canada. Stopped at every motherfucking uh, Tim Hortons from one fucking end of the country to the other. Went through Cape Fear. Went through Thunder Bay, which is one of the most intimidating things you've ever seen in your life. Yes, I was fleeing the U.S. for cannabis charges, which I later dealt with. Are you a fucking narc? Are you writing a story? Uh-oh, that's the end of the story tonight.
I think it's cool so many people come back right away and watch this late at night. Do y'all have nothing to do? Am I that entertaining? Or is y'all just have not a fucking thing to do? Which one is it? Yeah, so I ended up in Winnipeg, and that's where I met Bad Boy. And Homegrown. And um, my favorite Mendo tune is uh, How We Grow. So I got to Winnipeg and I met Bad Boy and um, Homegrown. And I lived with uh, a guy named Sweet Leaf and I taught him how to grow pot. And I filled up his basement with pot and we were growing the fuck out of it in uh, Winnipeg. And we had the only roof there that didn't have snow on it. And I didn't know about that, which didn't help. And, uh, um, catch my breath. One day I won't be able to tell stories so y'all remember them, okay? That's straight up truth. One day I won't be able to do this. So I was getting this guy um, to send me some clones. Um, I'm trying to remember his fucking name. I'll remember his name eventually. So I'd send him some clones when I lived uh, in Florida. I sent him a whole shitload of clones, okay? I sent him Jack Cleaner and I sent him Killer Queen and I sent him... Space Queen, and I sent him Urkel, and I sent him G13. By the way, how many years is this before I fucking met you know who? And uh, so I was I was growing in Canada, and I was breeding these seeds, and I was trading them with my friends in the '77. And I needed some more clones. I needed the AK, and I needed a Jack's Cleaner back. So my buddy tried to mail Jack's Cleaner to me. This was in '96, '97. And this is the mistake I made. Number one, I looked too disheveled, if you know the word. It was cold as a motherfucker. I, I had long hair back then as well. And um, in Winnipeg, you don't travel by your own car, you travel by bus. So by the time I walked from the car to the bus and from the bus to the fucking place and went in, I looked haggard to some degree. I'll always say that that was part of it. But the main thing is I was too fucking, I guess I was too, I asked too many times the package that it was supposed to be there on like a Wednesday, so I went in on Wednesday, I said, hey, is the package there? Or Tuesday, I was like, the package there? So then on Wednesday, I said, hey, is my package there? No. And then on like Wednesday, I was like, well, is my package there? So it's no. So Friday, I went and the, my package was there and they were acting a little sketchy, but it was whatever, I got my package. So I, I went home on the bus, this box and I get home and I open it up and the clones are dead as fuck so I was like well this doesn't look right why are the clothes dead as fuck because this guy should know how to send me clones so I was like shit so I was in there and about that time I heard fucking I was like huh fuck so I opened up the door and there's the cops the Canadian cops and they're standing there but they're, they're like they don't have a ram and they don't have a machine gun or anything, you know. They're not trying to kill me or anything like that. So, uh, they just, uh, <coughs> uh, they come inside and he's like, he's like, hey, keep your hands where I can see me. And I'm like, yeah, man, it's cool. I'm not gonna fuck with you, you know. So he comes inside and they sit down a little bit and the two cops go downstairs and they find tons of weed. I am good at my job. There's clones fucking everywhere. There's buds everywhere. There's plants all over the goddamn place. So the guy comes up from the stairs. He goes, yeah, there's quite the garden downstairs, eh? So I'm sitting there. So then they open up their little computer and they find my, sh they surround my record and that's when they find all the warrants and shit. So that's when he cuffs me in front. They never were fucking cruel to me. And Sweet Leaf was not home yet. And so uh, basically they, he came home and they released him on his own recognizance. And um, me, they held on this warrant in Canada because I was warranted in Florida, so they didn't know what to do with me. They weren't, I wasn't really in that much trouble in Canada if I wouldn't have been a fucking fugitive. Because Steve got off. I mean, he was in trouble, trust me. He was in a lot of trouble. But he didn't lose his home, and he didn't spend a lot of time in jail. He basically just... Uh, I had to pay a lot of fines, and I think he had to do some community service. I think he had to keep his nose clean. I'm not making light of what happened to him, but he didn't fucking spend 
five and a half months. But believe it or not, all that shit's expunged. Well, it's getting expunged. So it's kind of crazy that now I have a DA, which is like, I have a lot of protection now in my life. Like I don't grow cannabis and I don't touch anything illegal ever anymore. And I have like these badass lawyers that are in part of this contract up in, uh, in Arizona and Nirvana, uh, Nevada. I am a little high. I eat 400 milligrams of gummies. And, uh, so now I have like protection. Like I can produce unlimited amounts of